Happy New Year! I hope you all had a great holiday season. I sure did. I got lots of reading done. I read 20 books this month, and I'm ready to talk about them. Starting off with the romance genre, the first one I read was Hot House Flower by Kristen Becker Ritchie. This is the fifth book in the Addicted series following Rake and Daisy. It is the worst book in the series so far, unfortunately. Every book in the series has been a five-star read for me, except for this one. This one was a three, maybe a 3.5 or 3.75 because I love the breadcrumbs we got of Rose and Connor and Ruby and Will. Without them, I would not have liked this. I was reading this book solely for Connor and Rose and not for the main couple. I don't care about Rake and Daisy as a couple, if I'm being honest. I was inter interested in their individual journeys. For them as a couple, I couldn't care less. This book also heavily pushes the notion that you should automatically forgive those who wrong you if you're a family, and that's something I strongly disagree with. I'm a firm believer that if your parents or siblings or whoever abuse you, don't respect your boundaries, make you miserable every time you're there in your presence, like it's okay to cut them out of your life. These characters have awful parents and a lot of them would be better off quite frankly. I didn't like that the message of this book was that you, family above everything, even if they're terrible to you, you should forgive them and make an effort with them. No. Thrive by Krista and Becca Ritchie. This is also part of the Addict the Kelly Sisters series. It's meant to be read after Hot House Flower. It goes over the events that happened in Kiss the Sky and Hot House Flower from Lily and Lo's perspective. So I thought this book would be tedious because I've already read through all this stuff. I know it's going to happen. But there was surprisingly a lot of new content, not just from the main couple, but also from Connor and Rose. And any new content of Connor and Rose will be gladly devoured by me. I ended up giving up a five-star rating. I thoroughly enjoyed this. I love Lily and Lo. I love Connor and Rose. I love the fan family. I like the bromance between Lo and Connor. I love the strong sisterly bond between the Callaway girls. I loved watching Lily's recovery from her addiction. She made so much progress in this book, and I'm so proud of her. I just love this book so much. Five stars. Archer's voice by Mia Sheridan. This follows Archer, who is this mute, misunderstood man in a small town, and Bree, who is this super sweet girl who went through something traumatic and wants a fresh start in a new town. I feel like everyone likes this book, so I'm scared to admit this book. Was, I was not a fan. It was insta-love. It was cheesy. It was predictable and dramatic and not in a fun way. This felt like trauma porn, and sometimes I really like sad books, but this one didn't work for me. The characters weren't unlikable, but I couldn't relate to them or connect with them at all, so I felt kind of indifferent to their story. Maybe not indifferent, because some of the things I have, and I did feel bad for them, and I did care that it was happening to them, but I was just not super invested in this book there were some things i did like in this book though i liked the fact that the hero was a virgin and not the heroine i liked the role reversal and what else did i like about this so that's awkward i can't think of anything else that i really liked off the top of my head i am interested in reading travis's book he's the villain in this and i'm curious about how mir sheridan is gonna go about redeeming him then i read summer hates christmas by rachel dove because i wanted a holiday book this is a reverse Grumpy Sunshine Christmas romance. Noelle opens a Christmas shop next to Summer's travel agency business, and she hates him. She hates the holiday, she hates his shop, etc. I love the idea of this. I like the idea of a Scrooge-like Grumpy FMC. It sounded fun, but my problem with this was that she wasn't fun Grumpy like Chloe Brown from the Brown Sisters trilogy, which I highly recommend that book if you want a good, entertaining reverse Grumpy Sunshine book. But we're not talking about that one right now. We're talking about this. Summer was not not like Chloe. She was just mean. There's a difference between being a grumpy character and a mean-spirited person. And Summer is the latter. She was so mean to Noelle. He's so nice to her. And she's horrible to him in return. I didn't like their dynamic. I ended on a three-star rating because it's not the worst thing I've ever read. And there were some cute scenes and characters. But overall, I didn't like this. Also, don't go into this expecting a cute, fluffy holiday book. Because it's actually quite heavy which i wasn't expecting at all from the blurb which falsely labels it as a rom-com it is not very very heavy for a holiday romance and i read caught up by liz tom ford this is about a professional baseball player who is a single dad and needs help with his child his coach's daughter ends up becoming his nanny and the romance is between them i gave this four stars i wanted to love this so much because the right move is one of my favorites of the year but it didn't hit as hard as the other book in the series. This felt really repetitive. It definitely could have been shortened. I felt like this book did not want to end. I still enjoyed it though. The scenes with Max, the baby, especially were so cute and wholesome. And I'm glad we got to see 
Brian and Indy's wedding in this book because I love them so much. Well Met by Jen DeLuca. This is an enemies to lovers rom-com that takes place at a renaissance fair. I really like this. It was a four-star read. I love the renaissance fair setting. It's very fun with the costumes and the acting and everything. It was really unique. Never read a book set at a renaissance fair before. So it was fun. I loved it. I loved experiencing something new. I docked it a star because there was quite a bit of boring filler in their reason for being enemies. I say enemies very loosely. Their reason for being enemies was really ridiculous she hated him because he told her she filled out her fair form wrong and she took it very personally even though he didn't even say it rudely he was just like you need to sign up for the specific rule because dems the rules and she made it into a big thing and hated him for essentially nothing it was just kind of stupid but i still really enjoyed this and i could I had a good time with it emergency contact by lauren lane and anthony ledon this is a short holiday romance. I didn't even know this was a Christmas romance until I started reading it. I just wanted to read it because I knew it was written by a married couple. And I love the idea of two people in love writing a book about love. That's just so cute. And I knew it was a lovers to enemies to lovers book. And I love those storylines because they give me my two favorite tropes, enemies to lovers and second chance. I chose to read this at the perfect time because December is the perfect time for holiday romances. So I'm so glad I read it at the time I did. This is about a divorced couple. The FMC, Catherine, gets into a car accident, and Tom, the hero, gets called because he's still listed at her, her emergency contact. She forgot to change that after they divorced. So he goes down to the hospital, and the doctor tells him that someone has to watch over her for 48 hours because she is concussed, and she has an injury between her shoulders that she can't reach to take care of herself. She needs someone else to change the band-aids and whatnot. And at first, they're both like, absolutely not, I hate you, go away. But then Tom starts to feel bad because she doesn't have anyone else to, and without his help, she's going to have to stay in the hospital for Christmas. So he agrees to stay with her, but he was planning on going home for the holidays to see his family. So she has to go with him and they go on this wild adventure that entails missing flights, blizzards, lots of bickering. If you don't like couples that bicker, stay far away from this book because that's all they do. I had fun with this and I gave it four stars. Definitely brought the Christmassy vibe with the ugly sweaters and the snow and everything. It was the perfect book to read for the holidays and the writing was good i feel like i read this super fast because the writing flowed really well the reason it's not a five is because it ended kind of abruptly with them getting together there were still a lot of things that needed to be discussed in depth before jumping back in they kind of just glossed over what caused them to divorce in the first place and got back together because the love conquers all or whatever oh and this is also a reverse grumpy sunshine i forgot to mention that overall this is a fun funny time but i wanted more communication twisted love by anna huang this is the first book in the Twisted series. It's Brother's Best Friend and Grumpy Sunshine. This follows Alex and Ava. I gave this three stars. Alex was just way too possessive and controlling. At one point, he showed up at her photo shoot because she models and made this big scene, threatened the photographer if he continued taking pictures of her, even though they were just doing their jobs and they were both consenting. She wanted the pictures taken. Honestly, buddy, touch some grass. And they weren't even together at this point. He's already acting this possessive. Either way, I wouldn't like this behavior, together or not. But the fact that they weren't even together and he's already this possessive of her, big red flag. I didn't like the smut either, which is weird because I love the steamy scenes in Twisted Hate. I can't believe the same author wrote the steamy scenes in this and that. She very much grew as an author. <laughs> Some of the things that came out of Alex's mouth during the smut scenes literally had me laughing out loud. At one point, he referred to having sex with himself as entering the lion's den. He said this out loud, unironically, sir, how are you not embarrassed? I was literally giggling. Like, that was, that was hysterical. Also, I feel like people were joking when they called him a stalker. They were not. There were some things I liked about this, though. I, Josh and Jules breadcrumbs ate. They were so delicious. I love them. It's so funny reading how much they hate each other in the beginning, know how hard, knowing how hard they felt for each other. Delicious. Love it. This made me want to reread their book. It's a lot better than this one. Also, I loved the scenes where Alex was teaching Ava how to swim. Those were really cute and soft and sweet. I like them. Definitely my favorite scenes of Alex and Ava. Betting on You by Lynn Painter. Say why a romance following Charlie and Bailey. This book gives the parent trap because these two team up to cause a conflict in her mom's new relationship. The only difference is they're not twins. I love this book so much. It was just so much fun. And the banter was so good. I was giggling, laughing out loud. I had a great, great, great time reading this. One of my favorite reads of the month. This is by far the best Lynn Painter book to date, in my opinion. You felt better in the movie, which is good. This one blew that one out of the water. This book legitimately had me laughing out loud. It was so funny. I love the me cute. They get into a little tiff at the airport, and then they end up being seated next to each other on the plane. 
<laughs> it was just so good. It was perfect. I can't get over how fun and entertaining their banter was. And the initial dislike to love was done so well. I loved it. They also have an opposites attract thing going on, and I really dig that. It was just so perfect. I had such a fun time reading this. Highly, highly recommend. Without a doubt, five stars. Something About You by Julie James. This is a romantic suspense novel about an FBI agent and an attorney. This follows Jack and Cameron, who have not spoken since he trashed her on national television, and she got him transferred to another city. They end up getting brought, to brought back together because she is a witness to a case he's working. It's friends to enemies to lovers. I had a hard time getting into this book at first because it's told in third person, and the reason Jack dislikes her is because she told him she did something that she didn't actually do, and it's just frustrating to read because I couldn't understand why she was taking the fall for something she didn't do. There was no real good reason for that. I also didn't like how he was being made into this terrible person when his reaction to what she supposedly did was kind of understandable. But after the motorcycle scene where he gives her a ride on his motorcycle and her arms wrapped around his waist, <laughs> he was just so good. I was giggling, kicking my feet. I was having good old grand time. Their scenes after that one were so much better than the first couple of scenes between them. They were more romantic, featured better banter. There was more understanding between them. Everything was just better, and I really enjoyed it. Although I will say that Jack leans on being a little too possessive and overly jealous at times. I still liked his character, but he needed to cool it down a bit. I ended on a four-star rating. It was fun, and it had some laughs, but I wish there was less possessiveness. Moving on to the fantasy genre. The first one I read was A, Ca a Clash of Kings by George R. R. Martin. I know this is critically acclaimed, but I did not enjoy the reading experience. I'm sorry. There are so many different characters and storylines going on at once that I felt lost the entire time. I was forgetting who was aligned with who and who was related to who, and the glossary isn't in alphabetical order, so that wasn't very helpful. I ended on a three-star rating. I can recognize that it's not a bad book. It's just not for me. This book is for the super smart people, the seasoned fantasy readers. They can keep up with all this stuff. I could not. I am not one of those people. Clearly, didn't work for me. Silence by Becca Fitzpatrick. This is the third book in the Hush Hush saga following Nora, who is a human, and Patch, who is a fallen angel. I don't know what wrong, went wrong with this series. I read the first book of five, the second one of four, and this one was a whopping three star. I'm just over it. I think everything was dragged on far too long. Nora is getting more bratty with each book. I was trying to cut her a bit of slack because she was is a teenager going through some terrible things. But she was insufferable in this. Oh my goodness. There wasn't any good plot twists either. The romance was lacking for the first 200 plus pages. This is a series that I'm reading primarily for the romance and not for the fantasy. Because in the first book, it was all about the romance and not much about the fantasy. And now the author is trying to switch that around. And it's just not working for me because the fantasy elements aren't that interesting. They weren't that interesting to begin with. And I also feel like this book did not add much to what we already knew about the angel world, so I was just bored. It was a lot of repeating what we already learned in the previous books. I gave it a three stars for Patch and Patch Long. He was so protective in this, but not in a toxic way. I was loving for it. He was a saving grace in this book, but even he couldn't redeem it completely, unfortunately. Ruin and Rising by Leigh Bardugo. This book. This book! Oh my gosh, where do I start? I gave it six stars. Let's start with that. Logically, I know you can only give a book up to five stars on Goodreads. But this book is better than any five-star book, and I needed some way to depict that, so six stars. I have not been able to stop thinking about this book since I read it. It's my favorite fantasy book ever. For those of you who do not know this third book, the third and final book in the Shadow and Bone trilogy, I know this is controversial, but I feel like the way it wrapped up was perfect. It was very fitting for the characters. I know 90% of the fandom disagrees with me because I went on Reddit and Instagram after reading this because I was in a rune and rising high and I was like, I need to find fellow fans because I need someone to fangirl with. And imagine my surprise when there was like no one that liked this book. It broke my heart a little bit because I think this book was absolutely brilliant. I love the characters so much. It was my favorite cast of characters ever. I love them all so much. I'm so attached to every single one and their dynamics with each other are so perfect and fun and the banter, incredible. The fan family theme is perfect. It's, It was making me emotional because the trilogy started off with two lonely orphans and now they've created this little family and it's just so beautiful and heartwarming and I loved it. There's also a lot of girls supporting girls in this and I love to see strong female friendships. Genya and Alina especially, I'm obsessed with their friendship. The plot twists were also so good and they made so much sense too. Like when everything came into together at the end, I was shook. The villain was cool. The action scenes were well written and intense. The writing in general, amazing. Lee Bardugo is such a talented author. There were some very beautiful quotes in this that I 
had to jot down and put them into my notes app because I never want to forget them. This also had a star class lovers trope, and that trope hits for me every time because it rips your heart out, and I sometimes I just want a good cry. Like I said, this was the perfect conclusion to Alina's story. The way everything was wrapped up was brilliant. I was mind blown with how everything connected in the end. Like, I like how everything came full circle. Brilliant, amazing. This book could not have been better. Divine Rivals by Rebecca Ross. This is historical fantasy romance that deals well with one more. It's about two rival journalists who are battling for this columnist position at the Gazette. And they're also pen pals. But Iris does not know their pen pals. She doesn't know who she's writing to. Roman does. This was so good. So worth the hype. Five stars. The writing is beautiful. I love the anonymous pen pal tropes so much because they're falling in love with who the person is on the inside and not basing their love off of a physical attraction. They developed a very deep emotional connection through the letters and I really like their emotional connection and I like that it developed long before their physical one. I like the banter. I like the characters. Roman especially. He was so soft for her. It was internal monologue and I loved it so much. The rivals of lovers trope ate in this one because they were rivaling hard. They made everything at work or competition. I was eating it up. There's something about competitive people that's just so fun. Also, there's a scene where she has to sit on his lap for three hours because there's only one chair. And honestly, the one chair trope over the one bed trope. There's more touching. It's just, it's just better. I'm very interested to see how everything goes down in second book with the gods with, and everything. I'm very excited. I can't believe it took me this long to read this book. It was a masterpiece. I loved it so much. Five stars. Six of Crows by Leigh Bardugo. I chose to read this because I was going through Shadow and Bone with Trolls, and this book is written by the same author and set in the same universe, so I thought that it would scratch that itch, and it did in the moment. But now I'm having Leigh Bardugo with Trolls. Her writing is just so good. Genuinely, I think she might be my favorite author of all time. The plots she, come up with, she comes up with are so unique and fun, and the writing is just beautiful. I'm going to be so sad when I get through her entire backlist because almost no author has been so consistently great for me. Six of Crows is about a group of six teenagers, most of them are criminals, who are trying to break into the, this prison to bust out this dude who created a dangerous drug that can be used to control Grisha, which are essentially people with superpowers. It's very, very high stakes because if they're caught, they're tortured and brutally murdered. And there are a lot of near-death experiences, so you're definitely feeling the suspense. I'm going to talk about each of the main characters for a second because they make the story, but it is. They're also amazing. Kaz, he's the main character. He's the criminal mastermind. He's ruthless and cunning and secretly softy, but only for one girl. He loved and loved me. I hate everything, but he drops much, and he delivered that. Inej, they call her the Wraith. She's such a baddie. There's Nina, who is flirty and confident and fun. And Matthias, he's prejudiced, which sounds really bad, but Lee Barugo wrote it really well and he still ended up being a lovable character he's been brainwashed essentially and his character development throughout the story is amazing he was actually the most interesting character to me because his individual journey was one of the most difficult ones he was learning that everything he learned had been a lie and obviously that's the last taken his character development was so good also he's broody and i love broody man so i loved him jesper he's the sharpshooter he's so funny and fun and will put a smile on your face every time he's on the page wylan he's the underdog of the group Everyone else besides Matthias is a seasoned criminal, and Wylan seems like he's in way over his head at first, and no one knows why Kaz invited him onto the super secret dangerous mission, but he proves to be pretty useful. He's also really wholesome and cute and curious, and I just love him so much. He's adorable. I also want to individually talk about all the romances in here because I'm obsessed with all of them. I was so invested in the ships. If they don't get a happy ending, I will cry. I'll start with Nina and Matthias because they're my favorite ship in this book their history and their banter and everything was just so perfect they served enemies lovers and opposites tracked so hard they were real enemies too like he literally dreams of killing her every night the tropes were done so well and when they weren't having a scene together i was just waiting for their next scene together i was really into them kaz and Inej were also super cute the way he would do anything and give up everything he worked for for her amazing show stopping kaz hates everyone but her it was delicious amazing incredible i loved it there's also Jesper and Wyland. Their banter was so much fun. They started off just insulting each other and then drifted towards flirty banter with insults thrown in, and I was eating it up. Also, there's a scene in here where they're arguing, and Jesper screams out, maybe I like your stupid face, and I was giggling maniacally. That was too good. Their relationship was very much a slow burn. I feel like we're definitely going to see 
their relationship escalate in the second book and I'm so excited to see it. One of the things I liked most about this besides the individual romantic relationships was the group dynamic. Lee Bardugo is the queen of creating interesting, fun group dynamics. I noticed it in Shadow and Bone and I'm noticing it again here. It's her thing and she does it very well. For the last couple hundred pages, I was so engrossed in the story. I was sitting on the couch reading this for hours. I did not move, not to pee, not to eat, not to socialize. The last half of this book was so amazing. I was on the edge of my seat the whole time. The romances were all shining. Everything about this book is amazing, especially the last half though. I feel like I spent a lot more time talking about this book than any of the other books here because I was getting unnecessarily specific by talking about every character and every relationship, but I don't care because this book deserves to be talked about for hours on end and so do the characters and the relationships. It's all just so good. Highly recommend. I feel like this goes without saying, but this was a five star read. Obviously, I adored it. So excited for the second book. I'm losing my voice because I'm getting sick and I've been talking for a long time. House of Roots and Rune by Erin A. Craig. Thinking about this book makes me so mad and so sad at the same time. Sad because this is my first ever signed book and I really wanted to love it. Mad because so many reasons. We'll get into it, but first let me tell you what this book is about. This is a gothic fantasy romance about a sheltered girl named Verity who can see and speak to ghosts. She gets a job offer that requires her to move into this creepy manure far away from home and paint a portrait of this guy named Alexander. The best way to describe this book is that it's like watching a horror movie in which the main character makes every possible wrong decision. That's not even the part that pissed me off the most though. The reason that this book infuriated me is that 250 pages could have been completely cut and it would not have mattered. It would not have changed anything in the slightest. The first 40 pages were important to the story to set the scene and all that, but then after that, nothing really matters until the 300 page mark. We don't get introduced to the main villain until after that point, and this character is the one who really sets the plot in motion and leads to Ver Verity figuring stuff out. The things that happened before he showed up had little relevance. I was really disappointed with the ending because I was making theories based on what we learned about the menorah during the, the 40 to 300 page mark because I thought surely some of this has to be relevant, but no. I just don't understand what the point was. I feel like I wasted so much time reading this. For example, one thing that's really emphasized are these peacocks that wail through the night. So many pages were dedicated to talking about this pe these peacocks for them to mean nothing in the end. They were just there for vibes, I guess. And the carp were also really emphasized, also mounted to nothing. I wanted this ending to tie up all of these elements that kept getting brought up throughout the story like the peacocks and the carp and the family carcasses, and it did. Nothing was tied well together at the end. It was just such a letdown. In the last 40 pages, the peacocks weren't even mentioned. Neither were the carp. So why were they there? You guys don't understand how infuriated I was with this ending. I feel like I wasted so much time reading it because most of it could have been cut. There were peacock designs all over this book, or at least in my edition of it, and that's literally just for the aesthetic. They mean nothing to the story. The main character also pissed me off because she's clueless. I was figuring things out 10 pages before she was, and then I was just waiting for her to catch up, which was annoying. The romance was dull. The final line pissed me off because it's not even really an ending at all. It's that cliffhanger. I can't believe I read over 500 pages of this for no definitive conclusion. Are you kidding me? I'm furious. Once again, this adds to me feeling like I waste my time reading this. I don't think there's going to be a sequel following Verity to actually conclude her story because the next book in the series is apparently about her sister Lenore and that's coming out in three years so that's just it I guess this is the end of Verity's story which wasn't even really an end I was so pissed also her being able to talk to ghosts sounded cool in theory but it's very underutilized she talked to only three ghosts this entire time and only one of these ghosts was truly significant to the plot I gave this a generous two stars because I like the disability representation with the love interest and I like the villain that's about it Zodiac Academy of the Awakening by Carolyn Peckham and Susan Valenti. This is a paranormal bully romance that's filled almost entirely of bullying and includes almost zero romance. It follows two twin sisters who find out that they're fae and that they have to attend this boarding school known as Zodiac Academy in order to get access to their inheritance. I know a lot of people are ride or die for this series and I'm so happy they found something that they love and are passionate about but this series really did not work for me. I ended up giving it a whopping one star. The bullying was way too much. It was awful. I've read bullying romances before and enjoyed them, but the whole crap, this was brutal. I don't know how I'm going to see any of these guys as potential love interests in the future with the way they treated the girls in this. There's also way too many dub con, non con scenes 
Again, I have read books with duck cum before and enjoyed them, but this was way too much, and it just left me feeling icky. I can usually put my morals away when I read dark romances, but with when the duck con scenes happen in excess like this, I can't. It wasn't even just the love interest doing this either. It was like every male student and teacher at the academy sexually assaulting or harassing them, with the exception of their friend Diego, who is portrayed very stereotypically as a Latino man. I filmed a reading vlog for this book, so if you guys are interested in hearing about every gripe I had with this book, you can go ahead and watch that whenever it comes out. It's taking me a while to edit, but it is coming. The Alice Six by Olivia Blake. This is another really popular book that missed the mark for me. This is a fantasy and dark academia book about six very powerful magicians who have been recruited into this secret society with the goal of getting to eventually work in the Alexandrian society and get access to these rare archives. Only five get the job though, and the other one goes bye-bye. This book wasn't bad, it just wasn't for me. The writing style was really hard for me to read. The words were not flowing in my brain. I had to keep rereading sentences and passages because I couldn't comprehend what she was trying to say the first time around. That's not to say the writing is bad. If you have a high lexile, you'll probably have no problem. But for me, this was a tough read. I'm going to continue this series simply because I ship Nico and Livy so hard to delivering academic rivals lovers so well. I need to see the payoff. I need to see them get together in the end. If they don't, I will cry in my room for hours. Onto the historical fiction. I only read one of these books and it was Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I put this book off for so long because I was scared that if I didn't like it, it would change how I felt about The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, which is I love so much. That's one of my favorite books. I've noticed that about myself. I will love a book and then read another book by the same author. And if I don't like that one, I will start to question whether or not I really like the first book. I need to work on that. I finally got around to reading this though and I loved it so much. It's not quite as good as The Seven Husbands for me, but I still loved it. This is a historical fiction book about four siblings and their deadbeat dad is told in dual timelines telling their parents' story and the kids' stories. That summary wasn't too good. I don't know how else to explain this. I don't know how to explain this in a couple sentences because so much happened because it spans over years and there's so many characters and so many stories were told that it's hard to give a brief summary. I'd recommend just reading the blurb because I'm not going to give you a good summary. But one of the things that I did like about this book is that there are so many characters that are having their story told. We got so many mini stories instead of one big story, which I thought was cool. And if you're a reader, you probably like stories. So I feel like a lot of people will like that aspect of this. I also loved the strong sibling bond between the four main characters. My siblings are the most important people in my life, and I like seeing other strong sibling relationships. I love Nina so much. She was my favorite character. I loved her character growth. One thing about Taylor Jenkins Reid is that she will write some of the best female characters you have ever come across. In Days and Shows in the Six, it was Camilla. In The Seven Husbands, it was Evelyn. In This, it was Nina. She does such a good job of making me fall in love with a character, female characters usually. Also, this book just made me feel so much. I cried. Every single book I've read by its author has made me shed a few tears. She has a knack for writing the most heartbreaking stories you've ever read. This book also made me furious, but in a good way. I was getting angry because I cared so much about all these characters and I didn't like how they were being treated. And when a book can make me feel so much like this, five stars. There was also so many parallels between the present and past timelines and full circle moments. And I just love parallels and for full circles and moments so much. I'm almost like mind blown when they happen. <laughs> thriller i only read one thriller and it was the gift by freedom mcfadden this is a holiday thriller short story about a woman who wants to go get her husband a great christmas gift but can't afford it so she does something extreme to acquire a gift for him that's all i'm gonna say about this i don't want to give too much away this was fun and entertaining while i was reading but it wasn't anything too special or memorable so four stars this book was a gift to me and my gift to you is this video enjoy